Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. Thanks so much for joining me today for this tutorial of Peaceful Pond. You're going to need a 9x12 canvas. I recommend priming it once with white acrylic gesso. And here are the following colors. Titanium white, neon yellow warm, neon pink, blue teal, Mars black, scarlet red, and light olive green. I'll post all of these and the brushes below the video in the description box as well. I'm going to start this painting with my number 30 filbert brush, just getting it a bit wet, taking a little bit of white and my blue teal. I'm going to start adding it towards the center and working my way out towards the right. I'm going to make the sky really soft and pastel like in patches. So over here, I'm going to use a little bit of white and pink. And then I'm going to take a little bit of pink, white, and my yellow warm and start working in the middle. So I'm going to pull some of it up into the pink, some of it into the blue, and we'll get a few other shades and tones this way. Now the next color I'm going to make is taking the blue, the pink, and the white together and I'm going to make a smoky purple color here. It's going to be really, really pretty with all the other colors. I'm going to apply it more towards the left. I'll move over and add just a little bit towards the center and a little bit over on the right as well. This will create a little bit more of a shadow and really help to make the pink and the yellow, those softer tones, really stand out. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit more of my blue teal white and pull across back and forth for our pond. And then I'm going to go right into my black with my blue and I'm going to go across the top, the side and start to pull it over and this is how we're going to build up our foreground and all that contrast and shadow. And I'm going to use a little bit of Scarlet Red in here as well. I think the red really gives it that warm, uh, rich color instead of just using straight black. It also is really complementary with the blue teal as well as the light olive green. You can use any red that you want and you can also use any black that you want. So I'm going to do a few different brush strokes in different directions here, adding and alternating with a little bit of white. Um, the white in with these colors is going to give that uh, bit of frosty look and a smoky kind of a plum color here and there that I think really helps to balance out the contrast and the shadows well. So you'll notice that I go side to side and then up and down. It also gives the water that reflective look. With a number four filbert brush, a bit of pink, white, and a little bit of yellow. I'm going to add some of those pretty colors in the water that we've got above in the sky. I'm now going to take some of my black, a little bit of red, and my light olive green, mix those up together, and I'm going to start pulling this in on either side of our pond. Just a few little lines, short little brush strokes here and there. This will add a little bit more definition and shadow. I'm going to wash my brush out and I'm going to go back to a mop brush now. This is a one inch mop brush. You can use any type of stipple brush that you have. I'm going to get this brush a little bit wet and make that smoky kind of plum color a little bit of black, red, a little bit of green, and a lot of white. You definitely want more white in your brush than anything. And I'm just going to start swirling around, tapping lightly here, but I'm going to blend that out because I really want to get a soft, swirly, blended look here. So I'm going to concentrate on around the edges of the canvas, the sides, and a little bit on the top. 
And as that paint starts to work out of my brush, I'm going to scumble around, really get a soft blended look, creating lots of little swirls and circles. I'm going to add a little bit more white, tinted slightly with just a hint of that yellow, maybe even a little bit of pink in there. Right, for our next step, I've got a number two round brush. I'm going to use water, that gray color that I made, and I'm going to add a little bit more of my green, black, a little bit of red, and well, even a little bit of some white, pink, maybe all the colors here. Just mix them all up. We just want something a little darker than the background. And then I'll gradually add a little bit more to create more depth. So we're going to come in just right away. Don't have any fear, just go ahead and do this guys. It's good. This is what's gonna make your painting really stand out and bring interest to it. So don't be afraid to add a big line across your painting. I know it seems really scary when you're first starting, um, but this is really important for this painting. So I encourage you guys to just go for it. And I'm gonna pull out little branches here and there using less pressure, just with the tip of my brush. And you can use a liner brush if you want for your branches. Um, but if you use the right amount of pressure, you can create some thin, delicate looking branches with a round brush. Um, you can use a number one round brush as well. This one is pretty small though, being a number two. Just depends on the brand and the make of the brush that you're using. So I'm going to add a few more trees back here. These ones are going to be straight up and down. And then I'll add another big one over on the far right here in a few minutes. Um, but I want to add a little bit of shadow and highlights on this tree, so I'll slowly start to add a little bit more here and there, alternating with my darker colors and then adding a little bit more white where I want it to be lighter. Now if you're at all having trouble with the flow of your branches and trying to make those soft, delicate um, little branches, just add a little bit more water to your brush and your paint and you'll find it'll be a lot easier. Let's come in right away here on the right side and just go for it with another big tree here in the foreground. I'm going to use those same colors, sometimes a little bit more of one color than the other. Um, it's, it's not about making the exact same shade as the other ones, right? It's just all within the same color family, just different uh, little, it'll differ slightly and um, play on a little bit more of either the red or the green, but it's all going to be very complimentary and soothing to look at once this is all finished. So wherever you want it to stand out a little bit more, you're going to use just a little bit more black either to play up on the shadows using red or green or all of the colors. That's what I want to use though, just to, just to help create more of that depth and shadow is just by adding a little bit more of the black. But still it's that smoky look and that's because we've got a bit of white going on within all these colors. So I'll continue just building up this tree with all the branches. As you can see, I have one that kind of goes up and then down towards the bottom meeting the pond. I love to add branches like that. I've got another mop brush. This is my angle mop brush. It's a one inch. and I'm going to take all those colors again and just start tapping lightly for the tops of my trees and I'll apply this all over. So this means you're going to go over some of these branches and we'll be adding a few more branches after as well but it's important to know that you've got to have some of those branches hidden it makes sense for how a tree looks right for the front of it the sides and the back so you want to build it up in layers so i like to do the branches first then the foliage and then a few more branches maybe a little bit more foliage after that uh, highlights and shadows but this is our first base and i'm going to take more white now to add a little bit of frost or snow and highlights at the same time. So you just want to apply it partially over the first darker layer of paint. You don't want to cover up the darker shade otherwise you're going to lose that uh, shadow. So you need shadow and highlights for something to look 3D. 
and I'm going to take a little bit more white over here, pull in a little hint of that pink and the yellow, and start slightly changing the color up a little bit. I will be using a little bit more of my light olive green as well for the right uh, side, the tree on the right side I mean. And I'm going to add a little bit of this smoky color that I used for the trees and the water as well. You can see how I'm just really, really lightly pulling back and forth and then up and down as well. That helps to keep it looking like water. I'm going to go over to my number four filbert brush now, mix up red, black, and green. And I'm going to start pulling in some more lines and creating a little bit more definition here in the foreground. And then pulling a few back there in the distance, getting ready to add my bridge. A little bit more shadow on the trees. Now that I've got some good shadows to work with, it's time to take a clean brush and start coming in with some white and start to build up my snowy or frosty highlights that we have here. So first I'm using a bit of white and then I'm going to really um, play in on those soft pastel colors that we've got in the sky. So some white and then I'll be adding a little bit just lightly, barely touching that tree trunk with a white, pulling and dragging, kind of tapping and wiggling down towards the base and the tree roots. I'm going to add a little bit down here on either side of the tree and the pond and just keep adding a little bit here and there on the branches and on the other tree as well. I will be using a liner brush or my round brush to add some white highlights and snow covered branches in the tree as well. And then, like I mentioned before, I'm going to use my pink and my yellow alternate or mix the two together with my white to add my highlights on my snow down below here. Again, just to tie in all those colors uh, nicely together to give this landscape overall a very soothing peaceful um, glow to it so that all the colors just work together nicely so i'll start to add a little bit more light down in here on the left side and at the base of the tree and you know eventually i'm going to be adding a little staircase in there i love my staircases i think that it just makes everything more inviting i'll just add a little bit more of my blue teal here A little bit of my light olive green as well and then without washing my brush right over to my pink and my yellow what that does is give us somewhat of a muted tone to those colors which is really nice to balance out all the other pretty uh, pastel colors that we have so I'm going to start working on some snow and highlights on this side of the tree Again, just putting my brush, placing it flat, barely touching, and just light pull and drag. Then I'm going to mix up my teal and my red and start adding another layer here down on the bottom left. I'm going to make a really pretty purple, smoky purple plum color soon with that red, pink, teal, and white that I really, really love. So right here, this is one of my favorite colors that I made throughout this painting process. Now, if you don't have neon pink or neon yellow, don't worry at all. You can still use a, a regular yellow, pink, and paint along. Um, the colors will um, change a little bit. It's not the same as the neon, but it'll still be really, really pretty. So like I mentioned before, I was going to come back with either my liner or my round brush with some white, maybe lighter pastel tones, and just make some of these branches stand out a little bit with a highlight. So you can tint your white with those colors, or you can just use straight white. You can add new branches. I will be adding some branches. Um, in front of some of this foliage as well. Remember building up your trees layer upon layer like this is what's really going to make them look three-dimensional and add all that depth.
Well, I'm slowly starting to build up my colors for my highlights here on my trees and add some more in the water. So what I want to do is play up on that peach right now. So I'm making it by taking a little bit of my yellow warm, titanium white, and just a little bit of that pink. Going back over to my number four filbert brush, I'll do the same thing again, a little bit less white this time. And I'm just going to lightly pull and drag it down here towards the foreground. I'm going to go back into that violet -y color that I made, that smoky plum color, and add a little bit of that here and there as well. Notice my brush strokes are a cross and sometimes a pull and a flick straight down. Again, that's to make it look more reflective and ripply like water. Back over to adding some more snow and highlights to my branches and creating some other branches here and there that weren't there to begin with. All about building up those layers. I've got quite a bit of paint on my brush when I'm doing this and I'm not pushing hard at all. This way it'll really stand out and it'll look nice and bright. So no water at all for this stage. If I'm using water and when I'm using water, I'll let you guys know. I don't use a lot of water when building up my layers to the foreground. I tend to use a little bit of water when I'm working on my backgrounds if I need to um, get a thin first base coat down, but I'll always mention it and let you guys know. All right, it's time for the next layer on our trees and I've got another oval mop brush. This is a one inch and I'm going to mix up my green, black, red and my pastel color there. So just a little hint of white and peach and I'm going to start tapping lightly. This is going to create more depth and more layers within the tree and then I'll come back over top and add another layer of highlights. So pulling into my white right away, a little bit of green, and all those other colors that are still in my brush from uh, the first coat, and I'm going to start tapping over. So this has got a little bit more of that green hue to it that is really pretty. Complements the bit of red base that we've got from that scarlet red and the pink that's in the sky behind this tree. So just tap, tap, tap. tapping lightly and not covering up all those other layers that we have below. Now I've got another dry mop brush I'm coming in and I'm just tapping the two together very lightly so that it looks a lot more soft. Uh, it was looking just a little bit too harsh and I want to really keep within that soft feeling of this painting. So I'm going to start the first stages down here on the bottom in the foreground and it's going to change quite a bit down on the bottom left because I'm working intuitively that means I'm not sure what I'm even painting yet and where this is going I'm just making this up as I go along I have no reference photos no ideas um, it tends to change and transform during my painting process so in case you're wondering why I start out with one thing down on the bottom left and change it here and there that's why um, my painting tutorials are not always like this, but a lot of them are, and it's what makes my channel stand out and helps to get you guys using your imagination more and become an authentic painter. You'll see I added a few lines there down for a staircase with my black and my red mixture. It could be tinted with a little bit of that green as well, as long as it's all within the same color family here, but it's dark enough that it's going to show up and we'll add some snowy highlights on those steps a little bit later on. I'm going to come in and define some more branches here, add a few more new ones, and define my tree trunks, just making them stand out a little bit more, giving them more depth with this shadow. A light little pull and drag as well, and if I didn't mention already, I'm using my number two round brush. I'm going to pull, wiggle and squiggle for some tree roots down here at the base, and then right away, with a thick amount of white on my brush, I'll add some snow to cover the top of them. You 
Okay, I wanna pick up a little bit more of my white and it's gonna be tinted with the colors that I have in my brush. So it's kind of that uh, dusty pinky color. And I'm gonna just add a layer of snow and highlights on top of my steps here. I'll be adding a few more colors later on throughout the painting process. I'll add a little bit of a turquoise or teal to them with a bit of white and I'm going to start working on my bridge here pretty soon. I just decided that I needed a bridge back there. I wanted this, it kind of has an old-fashioned feel to it and I kind of was thinking of uh, making a bridge back there with not a lot of detail, just like maybe an old-fashioned, very old stone bridge just with a simple low laying arch um, and I'll add a little bit of a reflection in the water as well. So I'm just going to go from one side to the next with a little line at the base. I'm going to make it a little bit thicker and then at the, the bottom of the bridge on either side I'll pull up and make it just a little bit thicker there and then go right down and do a lighter version in the water and then add some white just at the base here and pull inside up and over not pushing too hard I want this to be a little bit lighter because it is far away so it's going to be softer and lighter in tone when it's farther away so just a little bit of white inside of there so it makes for that light smoky kind of a rose color again that's the black the red and the white together so I'm going to go in here and just make sure that it looks uh, solid at the base on either side by adding a little bit of a shadow with that black and red. Now to make it look separate from the reflection in the water, I'm going to add a little bit of tapping a little bit of that white in there along with that red and black just so that it looks like land and it separates it from the water. Now I'm going to go back over to a stipple mop brush and I'm going to add, uh, I've got a mini one here and I'm going to take a little bit of black, red, white and green, uh, more white than anything as you can see here so that it really shows up and I'm going to add delicate little taps highlights and frost on my foliage. I'm going to go all around the painting wherever I want to create this frosty look and I know that it's going to dry everything here is going to dry a little bit darker so I'm adding a little bit more white um, than I necessarily want it to be because I know that I need to plan ahead and have it um, dry to the right shade and color uh, later on. So with acrylic paint it does tend to dry a little bit darker than what you're initially first putting on. When it's wet it looks bright and then when it dries it's a little bit darker and faded. It does really help to add a layer of gesso first. I like to use the white gesso. I think that helps to make the colors pop out later, but you can get it in other colors. You can also get it in clear and it just builds up uh, the canvas and fills in all those little holes that canvas can have so that your paint stays on top and doesn't kind of sink in and disappear. I notice that it helps um, a lot even if I've got a canvas that um, I purchased that's triple primed, it does make a difference. And I've noticed this uh, over 20 years, over 20 years of painting, I've um, experimented with different canvases and uh, the quality, and especially with using gesso, it's something that does make a difference. So I wanna always mention that to you guys so that you can be producing the best paintings you can and that you're happy with your outcome and your end result. Okay, I'm gonna pull in a little bit more of my peachy pink color and start adding a layer around this landscape. And I'm gonna switch over to my uh, number nine filbert this time going a little bit larger I had a number four before and I'm gonna take some more 
that peachy pink and just really, really gently start adding some bushes along this path. I'm going to take this path further so that it, it ends up leading up to that bridge. So just light little taps to create that edge above the water. And I'm going to add a little bit here and there in the trees. And I'm leaning more towards the pink. There's a little bit of that peach in there from the yellow, but more pink than anything here. Uh, especially anywhere that I have that green, because I know the two colors are complementary and will play off one another and look pretty. Now right here specifically, I'm using more white and my neon yellow just for the edge here. I'm going to start adding a little bit of light behind the tree on either side, just very softly blending that in, giving it sort of a hazy uh, fog type of a look. And then I'm going to take a little bit of pink, red, and yellow, mix it up slightly, and just go down the side of the tree. And here's where I start to experiment down in the bottom left. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do, so I decide to go over to my number 30 filbert, take a little bit of black, teal, and white, and I'm going to mix it all up and just start to tap it over where I added a little bit of that pinky red color down here on the bottom. I'll add just a little hint of it over here on the far right as well. And then back over to my number nine filbert brush. I'm going to blend that out and soften. Now at this point, I'm still not sure what I want to add down here on the bottom left. So I will play around and experiment a little bit more. So I'm pretty much taking all of the colors at this point and contemplating if I want to make this staircase into a little bridge. So you'll see me kind of play around and decide which way I want to go with it. And I'm just adding a little bit more depth to some of these steps here. And then picking up a little bit, uh, a little bit more white than anything. Making that kind of a smoky blue look. And I'm going to add another layer on top of the steps. I'm going to add a branch down in here as well, the same color. And then I'm going to add uh, this color as a highlight and possibly some snow on the top of the bridge in the distance. I'm still not sure about this area, so again it changes, and I go over to my one inch um, mop brush, taking mostly just white and tapping in, and I'm thinking maybe I should just keep it some frost covered bushes here and keep it kind of simple. So I try that, and I'm still not happy with it, so you'll see it changes a few more times. And then in here I start to pull the paint off, but it looks kind of pretty, so I'm thinking, oh, maybe I can make this into a little angel or a little fairy. And then it changes again. <laughs> Stay with me, guys. I'd like to share this part of my creative process with you. I think that maybe you guys can learn from this experience and maybe recognize some of your own um, techniques and um, stages of painting. Maybe you do this as well. So here I decide, okay, I'm going to try making it a bridge. So I go underneath, over top with mostly black.
then I decide that I want to take that off or soften a bit. So what I'm going to do is just take my, my little towel and dab, and then I'm going to come back in with some more highlights, frosty looking blue, teal, turquoise here, and just tap in small areas, just little taps here and there. So now I want to go in and add a little bit of a pinky uh, tap here and there. So I've got both the turquoise and the pinks. And then I'm going to start really building up the snow in the foreground. I'll be adding a lot more white and you'll see how that transforms when we get more of that fore foreground feel to this painting that sets that pond kind of uh, mid painting. So I'm going right across the bottom of the canvas from the tree roots all the way to the stairs. And I'm gonna pull over each stair and step making a thicker layer of white. And then I'll balance out the shadows underneath. I'm gonna take a little bit more of my white back here and I'm just gonna lightly add a few layers on either side of the pond and a few little brush strokes really gently the base of the bridge and on the side of our path. I've got a number 10 mini liner brush here and I'm going to take my black red and lots of water to help that paint flow and I'm going to come in and add another thick kind of a branch here that is really really um, whimsical and curvy looking. I wanted to add my own flair to this tree here and really exaggerate uh, the lines on it. So I'm going up and then down kind of in an arch and somewhat making the ends of my branches a little bit swirly looking. Back over to my mini mop brush and that deep kind of gray color that's tinted with red and green and teal. I'll tap lightly for a little bit of foliage there and then go right over to my white, tap in and add a little bit of frost and highlights on the tops of them. I'm also going to pull lightly and flick down, straight down to give it a bit of a frosted um, moss, hanging moss look. I thought this just helped make it look kind of romantic and dreamy like. So I'm just going all over and just very lightly and gently pulling and flicking off some of those branches. And then I'm going to do another layer of white highlights here on either side of my stairs. And then I'm going to be adding my big uh, tree leaning arched branch down on the bottom right that will have our little pretty bird perched on. Okay, so using my number four filbert, black and red, I'm going to push gently, pull, wiggle, and then let off on an angle and slightly arch over um, right by our bridge there. So we have those two kind of arches going together and they look really pretty together. I'm going to add another branch here and there, wiggling off. I'm going to start adding some highlights and building up to snow on the top. And then I'll be adding more and more snow, more white. Ultimately, towards the end, I'll be adding a little hint of that neon yellow to my white to give it that golden uh, sunlight hitting it with a liner brush.
So having this tree here in the foreground really dark to start and then really bright highlights is what's going to make it stand out and stick out from everything else behind it. So it's really important to do this correctly, otherwise it you won't really be able to see it. It'll sort of get lost with everything else in the painting. So you need to have it darker than the other trees and brighter than the other trees, more shadow and more highlights. So I've used my liner brush there to pull and wiggle and add really thick amounts of my white. I'm going to come in now and create a little oval or circle here for my chubby little <laughs> winter bird with my peach and my white. And then I'm going to come in with a little bit of black and red, add a tiny little uh, line that comes into a, a point for the beak. It's so small that we're not really going to see the eyes and the beak details. We just more or less want to know that it's a bird, so it's just a little suggestion here. You don't have to over detail or try too hard. Just concentrate on the shapes and the colors I'm using and a little bit of the brush stroke. So just a little dab, pull and flick here and there. We want that belly to be brighter than the rest. And to make it stand out from the background, you might want to outline it uh, thinly with one of these dark colors. So any color here um, tinted with a little bit of black will work. And then add the darker wing on, and the back and the head. So I'm going to have it come down a little bit over the branch. And then I decide I want to keep this more of a small round chubby little bird so I might take off a little bit of that tail making it shorter and I'll just go over it with more white for my snow. I'm going to get a mixture of my neon yellow and my white Thick amounts on my brush, no water at all. Like I mentioned before, I'll let you guys know if I'm using water at any time. Um, as I work towards the foreground here, I use less and less water and pretty much just 100% heavy bodied acrylic. I like my paintings to have a little bit of a texture when they dry. It helps to create more um, of a 3D look as well when you use thick paint and you um, have it a little bit bumpy, especially on this tree and these branches here. I want to be able to feel that um, 3D-ness of the snow, I guess you could say. And I'm going to add and exaggerate a few more delicate branches here that are kind of hanging down. And then I'll build up more snow and ultimately make it look like there's icicles and snow just kind of draping and dripping off of the tree. Okay, I'm just going to add a few more shadows and shape to the head here, the beak, and the wing as well. And then I'm going to add a lot more white and build up the snow to the final um, details of this uh, big branch and tree here. So thick, thick amount of my titanium white, sometimes using the tip of my brush, and then like you can see here, just very lightly pulling and dragging the whole width of the brush to give it that patchy snow covered bark look. I'm going to go right at the base of the bird slightly over part of the bottom there that kind of nestles that bird in there. Maybe it's got a little nest there somewhere and then pull off of that wet paint to create those uh, drippy icicle looks. So I'll pull off a little bit here and there off of each branch and even off the side of the trunk here. Time for another layer of highlights and snow and I'm going to continue using my little liner brush here. So I just want to take some white and go over um, some of these steps here and then I'm going to start painting the stones in the water. So we're going to have some snow covered stones. They're really really super easy to paint. You just want to add a little bit of white. You can tint your white with anything if you want, whatever color you want your snow to be. And I'm just using white here and just creating uh, lots of different sizes of half circles or half ovals. So if you just tell yourself you're painting shapes like that, it makes it, it just simplifies it so much. 
and then I'm going to make uh, a shadow at the base of them where they separate into the water and I'm going to make it look 3D by adding this dark color so it can be any dark color of your choice not just straight black I'd recommend adding a color to your black it just makes your paintings much more vibrant and rich looking with a clean brush white a little bit of pink but mostly the yellow I'm going to add some beautiful golden light highlights here just over the very top And I'm going to take a bit more of this color and I'm going to just graze the inside of this tree trunk, a few branches, and I'm going to do the same thing um, on this other tree. For me, this is really the finishing touch. I love this little hint of golden light. Uh, less is more, so just a little bit here and there. It's to me what really um, let me know this painting was done. It's the final touches. So just a little dab here and there to finish up this painting. I loved, loved, loved working on this using my imagination and glad I decided to let the camera roll so that I could share this one with you. If you guys enjoyed watching this and you got inspired at all, please let me know in the comments. I'm always happy to read your comments and connect with you guys. Um, if you decide you want to paint along with this, please share it on our Facebook group, tag me in it. I'd love to see your version. And of course, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I've got tons of info, tips, and tricks throughout my tutorials here on YouTube. You can also join Patreon if you'd like to um, get early access to my videos, extra content, and be part of our monthly painting challenges. I've got some great prizes. So happy painting! Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you all very soon in another video. Bye!